The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Through the addition of a third furnace at its Germiston-based manufacturing facility, glass manufacturer Nampak Glass will be meeting increased market demand in a more environmentally sustainable way. Leandi Kolva has the story. Nampak has invested 2.1 billion rand in its new third furnace, which has increased the company's manufacturing capacity by 56%. The addition of this furnace has also created 140 new long-term jobs and 2,600 temporary jobs were created during the furnace's peak construction period. Nampak Glass CEO Andre de Reiter discusses the reasons behind this investment and the plant's environmental aspects. Because of the fact that glass is predominantly manufactured in three major colors, clear, green and amber, we always were constrained in terms of our ability to meet demand from the market by virtue of the fact that we only had two furnaces. So a third furnace gives us a huge increase not only in capacity but also in efficiency in order to better meet market demand for product. We've invested from the word go in making this plant as energy efficient as possible. One of the major cost components in running any glass facility is energy consumption. So we have found that with the third furnace, we are, even without using the preheating technology, we are already 15% more efficient than our other furnaces. And this is a huge cost competitive advantage that we will obtain from this third furnace. Once we've commissioned our preheating facility where the raw material is preheated prior to being put in the furnace, uh, this will, we anticipate, add another 12 to 15% energy cost saving advantage. So overall, a really efficient and effective plant. In addition, we've invested in an electrostatic precipitator and this will ensure that there is no dust that gets emitted into the atmosphere and that will make us fully compliant with the requirements of the Air Quality Act. Speaking at the official opening of the third furnace, Trade and Industry Minister Dr. Rob Davies pointed out that his department also played a part in this investment through the Section 12i tax incentive. This investment uh, is, I think, testimony uh, to the realities on the ground in South Africa. We are making progress, we can make further progress, and there is a real possibility uh, that uh, these production volumes will come on, on stream as a result uh, of these investments. Now, uh, we as uh, the DTI have played a role, as has already been mentioned, in facilitating uh, this particular uh, investment. This particular investment is a brownfields investment and um, uh, the uh, project was approved for an investment allowance of uh, 550 million rand with an additional uh, training allowance of one and a half million rand. Total South Africa has partnered with famous brands and speciality grocer Thrupps to provide Total Service Station customers with a new convenience offering. Leandi Colver tells us more. Thrupps recently opened its first store at a Total Forecourt in Senderwood, Bedford View, bringing speciality food and ingredients closer to the residents of the area. Total South Africa sales and marketing GM Catello Zeka and Thrupps owner Chris Keane explained Total and Thrupps' thought processes behind this new offering. We were looking to differentiate. Uh, as you know, uh, convenience has become um, a necessity in our society. And we want Total to be the service station of choice. Uh, we're still a fuel retailer, but we wanted to make sure that we can have partners uh, that are attractive enough to bring the customers to us. When Thrupps was laid on the table, we didn't even think twice. Uh, it's a respected brand. <coughs> it's. Um, speciality store, it seemed like the right thing to do. Ten years ago things changed, uh, even 15 years ago they started changing but um, as I said earlier they 
there's a proliferation of supermarkets, of hypermarkets, and of uh, wholesalers becoming retailers. And as we know, the malls are there's an enormous amount of malls now. At the end of the day, Thrips's delivery system went very quiet ten years ago. Uh, there was a lot of competition. And we started looking for uh, furthering our name into the industry and basically uh, three years ago after looking at quite a few different options with major retailers, uh, famous brands brought what was probably the most um, sensible offering which was uh, us joining four courts. Meanwhile, Famous Brands brought its logistics network to the table, allowing the partnership to access a wider network of consumers. Famous Brands Food Services CEO Darren Hill elaborates on why Famous Brands decided to enter into the partnership with Thrupps and Total. Some of the, the benefits for us obviously is that we, we're entering the retail space, which is, which is new for us. Uh, and we're doing that in a very cautious and, and clinical way. But the main benefit for us, obviously, is that our existing brands, as in, as in what you've seen here, uh, Steers and Mug and Bean still form part of that. So from our perspective, we're able to service the a single market with multiple brands. While there is currently only one Throp store located at a total service station, the partnership is optimistic about the concept's future potential. Zeka and Heel tell us more. We will definitely roll it out. Uh, we will choose the right areas, choose the, the right consumer uh, and still keep the Bonjour brand for those areas where we don't roll it out. Well, we're obviously all very optimistic about it but we also need to be realistic so I think one has to balance that but this is very much a pilot site to be able to to, to assess you know how the consumer reacts to it, you know what are the, are, are, are the variables that go into it, you know how well can we do it um, but I mean you know we've done all the science behind it so we're confident about that and then you know there's, there's, there's kind of been a view in the network that we could probably roll out 50 of these uh, across Total over a very um, sort of medium term uh, period but it, again it's going to be dependent on consumer reaction and, and, and a consumer demand ultimately. Other news making headlines this week, Transnet Freight Rail confirms the purchase of second-hand Australian locomotives to plug its capacity gap and Siemens demonstrates the Curiosity Mars Rover's capabilities. South Africa's Transnet Freight Rail has confirmed that it's purchased 34 second-hand diesel locomotives from rail company Horizon of Queensland, Australia to augment its ageing fleet ahead of the introduction of around 1,400 new locomotives by 2019. The UCW, as a company in which the Noomsa Investment Company has shares, UCW is not an orig original equipment manufacturer. They bid with other international original equipment manufacturers and unfortunately they did not, or rather the original equipment manufacturer did not win the tender. For them to turn around and say that we've got capacity here, we could have done this job alone, is just not true because they were themselves bidding with another OEM. Having said that, Last week, NUMSA marched to say, why are we buying locomotives from China, from Germany and from America and not building them in South Africa? I think they had forgotten that we had said only 70 of the locomotives will be built outside South Africa. The rest will be built in South Africa with supplier development, uh, with localization, Companies like UCW are welcome to tender to do work. A working model of the Curiosity Mars rover, which is the biggest robot to land on Mars, was officially unveiled for the first time in Africa by multinational electronics company Siemens at its Future of Manufacturing conference in Boxburg. So what you see behind me is an example of what happens when you merge the real and virtual worlds. Siemens engineers, together with NASA engineers, designed and built the Mars Curiosity rover in the virtual world before it was put into prototype and launched into Mars. Over 8,000 simulations uh, were conducted by these engineers to ensure that everything went according to plan. NASA engineers only had one opportunity to land it on, on Mars and it went off without a hitch. As you know, the Curiosity rover is currently still on Mars, relaying back very vital and important information back to Earth about the red planet. What I can say from the Siemens point of view is that it was a combination of many months of engineering and design. Designing using our Siemens product lifecycle management technology, 
which is basically digital engineering, which is the frontier. It's where the industry is going. Everything needs to be tested virtually before it can be put into manufacturing or be manufactured. And this is the way we see the engineering industry going. The Mars rover, after seven minutes of terror, landed on the Red Planet on the 12th of August, 2012. So the Curiosity rover has been on Mars for about one Martian year, which is the equivalent of around two Earth years. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.